Our lot in life is to intercede for Louisiana, swallow all the spit, slime, vomit, and despair that comes to us on barges down the long spine of Mother River. We must pray ceaseless, silent prayers, lifting up our suffering in a chalice of baked Mississippi mud. We brush our teeth with dead oil and flush our guts with sulfur dioxide that we might be a worthy sacrifice. Growing up in St. James, you had everything. You had your foods and you had uh, gardens. You walk outside, take a a deep breath of the clean air, and you wouldn't get sick. You can't do that today. <laughs> you might take a deep breath of chemicals. When the first plant came, everybody was excited. My daddy would talk about it, and he said, we're gonna have jobs, and they were glad for jobs. But they didn't know the other side of industry coming in here. Most of the jobs now are for people that's not local. When I was younger, we'd play outside. We'd smell a smell, but we thought it was just normal and natural. And then you realize, it's not just the smells. It, it's dangerous. And, and nobody's doing anything about it. Every one of my siblings' children had bronchitis, eczema, upper respiratory infections, and asthma. All of our children did. That's not normal. I've been living here in reserve all my life. By the time we got to the 90s, our families as a whole, even my family, my mother died of some rare kind of cancer that we never heard of. And people that I grew up with, you know, they began to question the number of cancer deaths. The people here, culturally, they consider cancer a, a stigma. They don't like to talk about it. They keep it secret. And uh, when my wife was diagnosed with cancer, uh, that's when I really began to see it because she didn't hide it. When I came out in 2016 saying that I was a cancer victim, I didn't realize that we had so many young people in this area had cancer and older people. It was like they were free to see. I first heard the term Cancer Alley when I went to college. I thought, oh my God, this makes so much sense. And it completely defines what we've been dealing with in this area for quite some time. Cancer Alley is, by definition, the long stretch between Baton Rouge and New Orleans that is filled with fossil fuel and petrochemical industry. If you just look at a map where the plantations once existed, there is now majority black and brown population along that same line. It's also the similar map of the petrochemical industries and the build out. I never really associated the industries with our illnesses, but I do know people started dying so fast. And we had a, one person died one week, sometime he had two in one week, sometime he had three. When I started learning more about what these chemicals are doing to our bodies and that there was a connection between the chemicals that are in our water and in the air and that those chemicals can cause miscarriages and infertility issues, that's when I started like realizing, okay, this may have contributed to my miscarriage. I feel like it's a death sentence. It's like we're being cremated but not being burnt, but being polluted, dying from the in, inhaling the industries, going into our bodies, going into our nostrils. I began researching Cancer Alley in late 2018. We looked across Louisiana and we found that where you have more pollution, you have more cancer. What happens in Louisiana and along Cancer Alley is that we transport the fossil fuels, the oil from all over the world. And what happens as part of that refining process of refining a fossil fuel or refining oil into gas is that there's a ton of pollution created. The approach that DEQ and industry has taken is to simply try to point to a map and say, oh, well, 
you know, there's some places where the cancer rates are lower and we don't see cancer across the entire area at rates that are higher than the, the state average. That's not the question, right? The question is, are people who are exposed to cancer causing pollution developing cancer at higher rates in those communities? And absolutely the data support that yes, in Louisiana, places where you have more industrial pollution, you have higher cancer rates. The industry is expanding on both sides of us. So we're almost sandwiched in between and we make a sacrifice here in Donaldsonville. I'm a mother of three kids, uh, one girl, that's my older child, and I have a set of twins, a boy and a girl. All three of my babies was preterm deliveries uh, and underweight babies. My son born with only one developed strong lung. The doctor did not have faith that that twin would live to make it with the other twin. We know that Louisiana has a really high rate of adverse birth outcomes, but what we found was that pollution is a really big factor. Pollution is causing health problems above and beyond cancer. Our study provides more evidence that people who are living close to petrochemical plants in the area known as Cancer Alley, who are exposed to hazardous air pollution, are more likely to have babies that have low birth weight or deliver those babies preterm. Low birth weight and preterm birth are associated with health problems that can persist into adulthood. My son actually went to school to about two miles from the industry and the air quality caused him not to be able to participate in recess because he would have so many asthma attacks. He would describe it as pinching your nose and trying to suck through or breathe through a coffee straw. I had asthma my entire life. It does limit a lot of what I can do, um, but I still try and make sure that I can, you know, run up behind my kids, and especially my five-year-old. I grew up in Baton Rouge, and we moved to Geismar about a year and a half ago. Just last year, my husband and I experienced a miscarriage that was right after the abortion ban in the state of Louisiana. Um, a great deal of the hospitals were turning us away. I spent a lot of time trying to understand why so many women, and myself included, were experiencing miscarriages. Complete strangers that look like me, that live in this region, have said, you know, I've experienced that multiple times. And then, of course, came back to Cancer Alley um, being one of the reasons. I think our state is going to have to you know, take a hard look in the mirror and understand that we can't keep saying yes to industry as is. When I look back over the years, we're still at the bottom of everything. As black people, we're suffering the brunt of all the ill effects of this petrochemical industry. We don't benefit anything from that. We are the sacrifice zone. We mean nothing at all. What they would like is for all of us to move, for them to buy us out. We die out or they try to buy us out. So every bit of this beautiful river road is industrial. There's no place like home. I was born and raised here, and this is where I want to stay. The industry will have to go, not us. Then we will not be a sacrifice for the industry. In 2023, we went to court, and we joined with Inclusive Louisiana, and we suing St. Jan Parish Council for a moratorium. We stand here today to say we will not be ignored. Yes. You will not sacrifice our lives. Yes. And we will not take any more industries in the fourth or fifth district in St. James. Yes. I definitely don't want to see any more new industry. 
to come in. We have enough. Good evening, everybody. I'm Shmel Levine. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Rock. I know that somebody has to be the voice for the people. And why not us? Why not me? Um, my grandfather was a civil rights leader here in St. James, and it's in my blood. Cancer Alley, the stakeholders are 92% black. I think everybody agreed to that. Certainly, we are the majority of the victims, because we are victims here. If we don't come together and form an organization, form ourselves to protect ourselves, nobody's going to do it for us. We just see more and more battles and not enough support that we need. We get to tell this story over and over again, not knowing if it'll ever make a difference in our lives, in our future. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, with all my heart, hoping that we can stop any new industry from coming, unless it's green. That is a battle that we're gonna fight to the end power. But they need to regulate. I would like to see the end of fossil fuel, if that's going to make me live a longer life, breathe clean air, drink clean water. Yes, they could shut it down.